Welcome to the DreamWorks download. I'm Veronica McFarlane and I'm a dragon trainer in training. Which is why I've been studying up on everything about dragons, the land of Burke, and all its inhabitants. So hang on to your helmet because coming at you faster than a storm cutter are a hundred facts about how to train your dragon. Let's start with the most important part of being a dragon trainer. The dragons! Almost all the dragons in the How to Train Your Dragon series are inspired by different combinations of animals. School Crusher is a cross between a rhino, truffle pig, dung beetle, jackhammer, and a battle axe. Grump is a mix of walrus, tadpole, and an old bulldog. He's also the laziest of the dragons. He can even fall asleep while flying and his wings will still keep going. Now that's what I call multitasking. Cloud Jumper is inspired by a Great Dane and an owl. Its scales can even expand like feathers. Valka's Bewilderbeast is based on a shaggy musk ox and a woolly mammoth. And Stormfly's look is based on a parrot. Which brings me to Toothless. He's not like the other dragons, but we already knew that. He's designed to be the most mammalian of the dragons, acting like a big cuddly pet. His design, behavior, and personality were inspired by cats, dogs, and horses. In fact, one of the animators even stuck a ball of duct tape to his own cat's tail to record its movements, which is a great way to design a lovable dragon and an even better way to get scratched directly in the face. <coughs> Toothless's skin texture was inspired by a combination of bat skin, shark skin, and reptile skin, while his color was inspired by a photo of a black panther. And if you look closely, he's also covered in tiny spots that reflect light. Ooh, shiny. You know those ears Toothless uses to emote? Well, they're actually little spines. His eyes were based on a cross between a wolf and a cat's eye. When he's happy, his pupils are big and round, but don't make him angry because that's when they become slitted. The first time we see Toothless's eye up close was actually an accident in animation. Originally, his eye was supposed to be open the whole time. An error in animation made it look like it snapped open instead. But the director liked it, so it stayed. It also scared the snoggle dog out of me the first time I watched it. The noises Toothless makes are a combination of elephant seals, elephants, tigers, horses, and domestic cats. While the sound the terrible terrors make were actually recorded by a chihuahua named Paco. Most fans already know that the How to Train Your Dragon movies are based on the book series by Christina the Cowl. But did you also know? She based the island of Burke on a real uninhabited island to the west of Scotland? Plus, Hiccup's dad, Stoic, is based on her own father. And speaking of the books, in them, Astrid wasn't a character, dragons talked to each other in their own language, and Toothless was originally the size of an iguana. Try writing on that. Fun fact about Stoic, his voice actor, Gerard Butler, used his natural Scottish accent for the role. He's also played a Viking before in other movies, but I bet he had never ridden a dragon before. He and Craig Ferguson, the actor who plays Gobbard, are actually good friends in real life too. The role for Valka, meanwhile, was actually written specifically for Kate Blanchett. The director approached her at the Oscars and she said yes. Jay Baruchel, who plays Hiccup, has said he feels a special connection to his character especially since they have the same build. Twinning! But it takes more than talented actors to make a movie really great. Over 500 different people worked together to make How to Train Your Dragon, which took three years to complete. That's more time than it took for Hiccup to actually train his dragon. And a lot of that time went into making the characters look awesome. Stoic's beard alone took months to animate. And for How to Train Your Dragon 2, Hiccup's flight suit was designed to look like Viking biker leather while Valka's costume was designed to make her look like a dragon. Creepy. Eret's style was inspired by Sami and Inuit cultures. And in early designs, he was drawn really, really short. The first sketches of Drago, meanwhile, were of him as a bald dude, and he was originally given a pencil-thin mustache. And the little old lady with the tiny dragons is actually the town sage, who had a much bigger role in an earlier draft of the script. The second How to Train Your Dragon movie takes place five years after the first one. To help show the change in time, each character got a design overhaul too. The kids grew older, and even Toothless got a little more wear and tear. Did you know a dragon with wings but only one pair of legs is actually known as a wyvern? I guess Astrid should change her title to Wyvern Trainer. To create the dragons found in Valka's sanctuary, the designers made a program that mixed and matched different body parts of dragons to create new breeds. So each dragon would have a different combination of head, body, wings, legs, and tail. That way about 20 different designs could create hundreds of new dragon species. 
That's a lot of dragons in there. Over 1,000, actually. Before production started on the second movie, the filmmakers took a week-long expedition to Norway to live like the Vikings did. Some of what they saw there inspired Valka's Nest, which is based on the Arctic in Svalbard, Norway. And while she's surrounded by dragons, the people of Svalbard are actually surrounded by polar bears. For every human in the region, there's 2.5 bears. I wonder if they learned how to train them yet. Before making the movie, all the animators had to go to flight school, where they learned the physics of flight and they even earned a diploma when they graduated. They also took a skydiving trip to practice their aerial moves, like hiccup. To help them visualize the flight sequences, animators found it was easiest to map it out using a toy airplane first. Toothless has over 4,000 controls on his body during animation. That's like a puppet with 4,000 strings. Each dragon has its own fire that moves in different ways, like how Toothless has a quick burst of blue fire while the hideous Sippleback uses gases and a spark. Hiccup's Inferno Blade works with a mix of monstrous nightmare saliva and hideous Sippleback gas. He holds it in his left hand because Hiccup is left-handed, and he uses it to entrance the dragons he is trying to train. Because it's animated, the artists were able to make dragon fire act in ways the real fire can't, oozing more like lava. The monstrous nightmare's fire even has its own sense of gravity. And speaking of fire, here's a sizzling dragon secret. Dragons can't breathe fire when they're wet. And they can't go swimming until an hour after eating. Wait, never mind, that one's just for people. Remember the opening flying sequence in How to Train Your Dragon 2? The creators liked it so much that they made it twice as long as they were originally planning. The movie was also not even going to start with that scene. A previous version opened with Eret's fort being destroyed by Valka's Bewilderbeast. Throughout the production process, movies are always changing. The opening scene in the first movie didn't originally have dialogue, but the filmmakers felt it would help add more depth to Burke and its citizens. And in an early version of How to Train Your Dragon, Hiccup was going to survive the final battle with both of his legs intact. But the filmmakers realized that his injury helped give him a physical connection to Toothless. At one point during production, they thought about making Snotlout a girl. And the first few drafts of the script focused more on the relationship between Stoic and Hiccup, before it was decided that the main story should be all about Hiccup growing up and becoming the hero that Burke needs. Animators are like magicians, but sometimes their magic isn't meant to be obvious. In the scene at the end of the first movie where Toothless and Hiccup are flying through the spines of the Red Death, he is actually five times larger than he is in any other scene to make the shot work. In the second movie, the sun never sets over Burke. That's because it's so far north that during the summer months, the sun never descends. Fishlegs always carries his dragon cards in his pockets. These cards give him all the information he needs to know about each breed, almost like baseball cards. Hmm. I wonder what Toothless's batting average would be. Death songs possess extra cervical vertebrae. When they expand them into frills, they can project their calls to specific targets up to a mile away. And my mom can't even hear me from the next room. Mom! Squirrels can hibernate in icy glaciers for decades at a time and emerge as fierce as the day they were frozen. I guess they have no problem with brain freezes. Hookfang, Snotlout's dragon, can light itself on fire. But on the other hand, humans cannot. So please don't try this at home. Stormfly breathes pure magnesium, the hottest fire in the dragon world. Toothless's teeth retract so they don't get in the way of his fire breathing. Also in order to give him an adorable name, the monstrous nightmare is considered one of the mightiest dragons and are saved to be trained by the highest ranked Vikings. Gronkos like Meatlug are the only dragons that can fly backwards or side to side. They're like helicopters with their little hovering wings. They also eat a combination of iron ore and rocks and regurgitate highly priced metal known as Gronko iron. And deadly nanners get their name from the dangerous spines they shoot out of their tails. Catastrophic quakens, on the other hand, ingest rocks and melt them before spitting them back out as lava. Change wings can change color based on their mood and surroundings. They also spit acid instead of fire. Sea shockers do not breathe fire. Instead, their bites paralyze victims with an electric shock. And here I thought electric eels were dangerous. Stoic's dragon, Thornado, is named for the Norse god of thunder, Thor. Over the course of the first movie, we see the training ring three times. The directors wanted it to be a different layout each time we visit in order to keep it new and exciting. So we see it as an open ring, then a maze, and finally filled with noxious gas from the hideous Zippleback. 
When Stoic comes back from searching for the dragon's nest with only a singular ship, it is packed with Vikings. In fact, the same number get off that originally got on the three different boats. I guess Stoic was able to save them all. What a hero. The first scene in the series to ever be animated was when Hiccup finds Toothless in the woods. This may come as a surprise, but Meatlug is actually a girl. Pay attention during the opening of the movie. You can see Toothless's silhouette flying in the DreamWorks intro. Cool, right? And here's another Easter egg. Gloria, the hippo from Madagascar, also makes an appearance. You can find her being carried by a monstrous nightmare back to the dragon nest. The word Burke is frequently used by British people to mean fool. It's okay, Hiccup. I think Burke is a wonderful place. A toothless balloon was flown in the Macy Parade in 2014, and he's gonna fly again in 2015. The first movie was nominated for Best Animated Feature Film and Best Original Score at the 2010 Oscars, and the second was nominated for Best Animated Feature Film as well while also being the highest grossing animated film of 2014. Look, it's the credits. Looks like we almost made it to the end. Those drawings you see in the credits of the first movie can also be found in the book Hiccup Reads about dragons earlier in the movie. They're actually original design sketches for the film's dragons. And if you look really close at that book, you'll see the words are also just English made to look like runes. Can you tell what they say? Oh, there you are, 100 dragon facts. Did you think of anything that I left out? Leave a comment below along with your favorite dragon facts. Be sure to subscribe to DreamWorks TV for more awesome info about dragons. And click up here for more DreamWorks download. And click the link below for How to Train Your Dragon and How to Train Your Dragon 2 in Digital HD. Now I have to get back to studying. I'm trying to memorize fish like periodic table and dragons. Now let's see. Bewilderbeast, Bone Napper, Catastrophic Quaken, Cavern Crasher, Change Wing, Deli Natter, Death Song, Fireworm, Flightmare.